So there is another, there is another saying that it says, uh, we are going to be talking about what the Torah says about marriage tonight. So it says, like, you know, Adam Rishon came to Hashem with a long wish list. That they want a wife, that she has this and she has that, on and on and on. So Hashem tells him, look, this is going to cost you an arm and leg. So he says, he pauses for me, he says, what can I get for a rib? <laughs> <laughs> so, fine. Um, so we go back to, to Genesis, to Bereshit. Maybe tonight I want to just see a few psukim from the Torah to get some, some messages from here. I don't think um, any, any new, new ideas, but uh, the source, everything, it's in Bereshit. Bereshit, Genesis, it's the beginning of everything. We see, you see my Rosh Hashimah Zatzal Weinberg, he used to say that uh, if you want to understand what's the Torah's idea about marriage, it's good to go to the business world. He says that in the business world we have like a different entities. We have different like, you know, business units that they could come together in different formats. You could have, you could have something that it's called a partnership. You have two different companies, each one of them active, right? So they decide, like, you know, to, to work together. It's like, you know, you had the Robinson May. I don't know if you remember, I think it's Zichron Oli Racha. But you see, it's like, you, know, you have one department store, another, they, they decide, like, you know, to, to, to become, uh, right, to, to, to but, but each one of them, like, you know, keeps its, its own... Um, its own operation, but they just, uh, you know, work together, right? This is one, one way that, uh, right, they could collaborate, like, in two different units together. There is another, another form. Thank you. Thank you very much. Valentine's Day is next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a question, you know, it's, it's very interesting. Somebody, you know, you know, the, the sunrise, you know, he called me, he said that, you know, people called him up. He made something about, uh, like, Valentine's Day, so I think, is it, is it kosher to have something? I didn't think there was an idea, a problem, but then when I was talking to my wife, he was telling me that it is, he was saying it's like a saint, it's a saint, right. Christian. So the idea was, instead of that, to start something like in a Jewish, maybe like a Tuba Av, uh, <laughs> Jewish Tuba Av, or Shabbat Nachamu, after Shabbat Nachamu, this is some, you know, it's kind of like in a Jewish... Uh, Day that could never make up for that. It should be good for business as well. Anyway, so we have um, so we have one is as we said, uh, right? So one you have you have partnership. Then you have another way that companies right could uh, could work together or like you know, to become one, so to speak, which is a takeover. A takeover sometimes it's. Uh, Hostile takeover. Sometimes it's friendly. But, you know, one company comes and swallows the other one, and uh, it's like a boat or something in a sinking in, a, in an ocean. That you know, just you don't see it. It just disappears. It's just like you know, it's consumed. It's like you know, it's swa- you know, in, in the other one. So that's another type of, like you know, uh, two two businesses becoming becoming one. But then there is another, another fashion of like you know of, of uh, two 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 different entities coming together, which is called merging together. And you see a merge a merger when two companies merge together. It's not it's not a partnership, right? It's not like each one of them can, continues to operate. You know, independently, but they just coordinate their uh, their activities. It's not that, and it's not, it's not a takeover. It's not like you know, like, you know one company comes and takes over or swallows the other one, but it's rather they merge together. They become, they become one company, right? It's, like, it's a new name. It's it's it's, it's totally it's a, you know. So my Rosh Hashim was at Weinberg. He used to say that what, what Hashem had in mind when Hashem talks about creation of, of like in the, first, the first marriage, which is the prototype 
right? The Torah says, the Torah tells us, and, and we elaborated maybe on, on the first half of this Pasuk, uh, I think the first session we had, right? The Torah says, Al Ken Ya'azov Ish Et Aviv Ve'et Imo. Right? I think, you know, we, we, we spoke about this. It says, It says, it says, right, by Shan, by then, right, so it says, I can't get out of Ish, at Aviv, at Imo, with Davak, with Ishto, with Hayule Basar, Echad. With Hayule Basar, Echad, it means that they become one. They become one, so my Shrez used to say that this is like an emerging, becoming one. It's not a partnership that each one of them, you know, uh, runs its own business and they just coordinate their activities together. And it's not a takeover either. The Torah says, V'hayu lebasar echad, the ultimate, the goal of a Jewish marriage is, V'hayu lebasar echad, that they, they should become, they should become one, to create that, that oneness. And that, and that oneness is, is in all senses. It's really in halakhikli, right, the Gemara says, Ishto ke gufo. Like you would be shocked, like in the Torah says, like, you know, the, the Talmud has a discussion, and it says, like, you know, uh, even husband and wife, being, when they are together in bed, they could say Shema The Gemara says, because this is, this is one, this is, this is oneness. It's like a person has, like, you know, it's one arm, another arm. It's like, you know, one, you know, two, right? It, it's, it's, halachically, it's considered constant, the back and forth. It's considered Ishtoke Gufo. Ishtoke Gufo, like, you know, the, the, the wife of a person. Is that the person himself? It's like his own body. It's one thing. So this is what what, what the Torah has in mind that you know, the, the Jewish marriage should should create. It's and not not just just Jewish marriage. You should re- realize it, it, it's good to know that when you know when the, when the Talmud says that Ishrei Isha Zachu Shechina Beinahem, it says like you know that Shechina Hashem's uh, uh, presence dwells dwells among a couple, it's not talking just about Jewish couples. It says, Ishwe Isha, Ishwe Isha, husband and wife. It says, you know, the Ish in Hebrew has Yud, and Isha has Hey. Right? So we have, you know, Aleph, here we have, right, you know, Yud, it's we are in, in, in Ish, Isha, and Ketuba. Uh, Ish, Isha, and Ketuba. So that creates Yud Kevavim, that brings Hashem's Shekhinah between them. So you see, the, the, the half of the first half Yud K is also not Hashem. Right? Yud and K, and, and that's not, it's, that's even without Ketubah. Right? It's even without the Jewish Ketubah. If husband and wife, that, you know, that they live together in peace and harmony, even non Jews, right? The Shekhinah Hashem, of Hashem dwells, uh, dwells between them. Obviously, when you have Ish, Isha, and you have Ketubah, oh, yeah. so Ketubah also has an extra Vav and He, because the Shoresh, the root of Ketubah is Ketav, Kaf, Tet, Tav, right, Bet. So here, from the, 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 the Shoresh, you have an extra Vav and He. So then Ish, Isha, and Ketubah, it's Yud Ke Vav Ke, so then you have the full name of Hashem between them. But you see, even, even without the Jewish marriage, without the Ketubah, even husband and wife that live together with peace and harmony, the Shekhinah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, uh, dwells, uh, do, do, dwells between them. So here also, when Hashem talks in the Torah about Adam Bachavah, it's before Abraham Avinu, before the Jewish nation is created. Right? So it's, it's talking about this idea of, of, of creating that, that oneness. And uh, it doesn't. It doesn't obviously happen overnight. Creating that that sense of 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 uh, of oneness. It's something that uh, doesn't um, and it just doesn't ha- happen under the chupa. This is something that uh, takes uh, takes maybe a, a lifetime to, to to achieve. But this is the goal, and and it's, you know. So you see, it has a lot of ramification when it comes like uh, to all facets of, 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 of married life. 
this idea of um, of achdut of oneness is um, uh, is referred to. You see, a lot of times, you know, some you know couples, right? When it comes like, you know, to financial matters, especially in uh, Persian uh, families, this this is a lot of times it's uh, it's it, it, it issue. Somebody was telling me, you know, that uh, they think that you know a lot of singles don't want to get married because of they're afraid, like you know, they want like you know uh, prenuptial agreement, etc. Because they, they don't know what are the intentions, what's going to happen, etc. So you see, you know, in, in the perfect marriage, it's really it's it's one that they are really equal in everything, right? They have a joint, you know, checking account. Everything that they have is uh, right. It's uh, you know, it's a, a name of, of, of both of them. This is really the ultimate. But you see, lack of uh, trust, lack of um, security in the relationship, creates, right? Creates all, all kinds of obstacles, right? In in that in that sense. So you see, the old <laughs> back in Iran, the system that we had, and that was a Torah system. In that sense, it was um, in a lot of ways it was ideal. You see, like in the Ketuba, that was the way it was done in Iran. It was. Uh, Really, it was a prenuptial, right? It was uh, in, in all, uh, you know, uh, they use in the Gemara, the, the Gemara says, en ketubah belo meriva. It says, always over the ketubah, there was a fight. En ketubah belo Why? Because the amount that they would write in the ketubah, right, that was a prenuptial. That was basically, like from the very beginning, it, it, it would really take away a lot of tensions and mistrusts and such of things that now exist in marriages before it becomes secure, right? And also, unfortunately, it, uh, the way it seems like it prevents some young people from getting married. I mean, I've been doing uh, weddings for a long time, <laughs> but you see, just recently I had, uh, I had uh, a couple that got married and they... Uh, the father of the of the bride wanted to not to do it in the Persian way. He didn't want to, he says, I don't believe in this American way of having a you know, set amount written in the Ketubah. For your knowledge, <laughs> you see, the, 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 you know, all the Ketubah almost that we, we do here in America, uh, all over, you know, it's by the Persians also, the amount that is written in the Ketubah in case, God forbid, this Duras uh, Hamed, this marriage is going to dissolve. And you see, the Ketubah is cashed in two ways. God forbid if the husband dies, or they get divorced. So then it says that he's going to give her 200, or from his uh, uh, estate, she's going to get 200 silver coins. Instead, when it comes out something like $10,000. Why this is written? Because, because you see, in America you have a lot. Of one of the things you know uh, from the American uh, Constitution is separation of church and state. In other words, you cannot, you know, you cannot. Ketubah is not Ketubah. It's not a legal document that you could go and cash in the, in the court. Here, you know, and uh, you know, we have. You know, it says we have to follow the law of the land. And in America. Doesn't work like that. Right? In Iran, it wasn't like this. In Iran, the ketubah had the ketubah was yes, had value. You could take the ketubah in in the Persian uh, court right, court system and to uh, you know to, to cash it. So that's why in Iran, you see, you would in, in Iran they would write like in, you know millions of uh, whatever it was, right, or even now. Because you see, you know, in Iran we did not have this thing of separation of church and state, right over there. So it's okay, you're Jewish, so the Ketubah was uh, legal. The government enforced the Ketubah. So you see, but you see the, the, that system, right, it seems like, you know, you see, you know, oh, you're getting married. It's so unromantic to talk about, God forbid, about the opposite, right? But you see, you see, there, 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 there is tension in the system, and 
and it has, it, as I said, you know, I know enough uh, young people that uh, don't want to get married because of that, because they're afraid. You see, the, the, the system of the Ketubah, we have had meetings here in the Rabbanut also, maybe to try to suggest to couples, maybe to go back to the old system, because, you see, it would, it would really, it would, um, it would save a lot of heartache and a lot of problems. Right, if you would go back to the old system. And by the way, among religious couples that they do believe in the Ketubah and they believe in like you know the Ketubah says and it's and they don't care about separation of church and state. Like you know, if they have, if we have religious couples that you know if they have disputes, everything goes to the big thing to the Jewish court system. So then you know they they do write the Ketubah, they write not the standard amount. They negotiate and they write an amount there that it's fair and just. And even, you know, I personally, when people ask me, I tell them, look, I'm not again against fair, fair prenuptial agreements. It has to be fair. It has to make sense. So there are, there are some, like, you know, some of them, they're, like, you know, they're gradual, like, you know, it's like, you know, first year, second year, third year, right? After five years, uh, whatever, ten years, they become fully partners in everything. They are certain, you know, type, the type of you know, prenuptials that it makes sense. But you see, in the, ideal, um, in the ideal sense, what the Torah has in mind, it's really, it's like this oneness, it's in everything. This oneness, it's also, you know, really, you know, all, all what they have and they don't have, everything, it's there together. Right? And I know some, some very successful marriages, that what the husband does is like, you know, he just, you know, tr- he says, you know, brings his paycheck, gives it to his wife, and he says, you decide, you know, you decide what to do with it, <laughs> right? I'm telling you, this, this is, this is, uh, uh, you know, puts the responsibility on, 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 on the woman. And, uh, and, and you see, it's, it's very peaceful. Because, you know, she knows, you know, this, this is how much he makes, right? I mean, if somebody is a, a, a businessman, it also could be like, you know, the paycheck that he brings home. But you see, this financial aspect of the whole relationship, it, um, it, a lot of times it causes, it causes problems. So the Torah's idea is merging together. Merge, merging, it's really, literally in all, you know, whether it's the financial aspects or other things, it's considered like, you know, to create then that, that oneness that uh, Hashem Right, had in mind as a prototype of, of the very first uh, marriage that uh, took place in the history of humanity. And Hashem was the, the, the matchmaker, very easy task because you know, there weren't uh, too many alternatives and there weren't any in-laws involved. So that was uh, the ideal. That was the ideal. So you see, if we move on from that prototype, what the Torah tells us, it's very interesting that, um, you know, as we said, you know, Bereshit Genesis, Genesis, it's really the beginning of everything. And in Torah, we have different descriptions of, of uh, marriages that took place. Right. Uh, we have Avraham Avinu's uh, married life is discussed uh, at length, Yitzhak Avinu and Yaakov Avinu, all the, all the fathers. And, and as a matter of fact, also you see all of them. You see, it's very interesting. The Torah, when it starts, the story of Abraham Avinu, the founder of the Jewish nation, starts constantly. You have husband and wife. It's everything that happens with this one unit of husband and wife. Hashem picks Abraham Avinu after already he's married with Sarah. This couple. When Hashem tells Avram, Lech Lecha, it's Avram and Sarah together. So the whole story, they are, they are building together. As soon as Sarah Imenu passes on, so then everything is put, it's put on hold. Right? The Torah stops everything till Rivka comes into the picture. If you follow the story of the Torah, the storyline of the Torah, right? when Hashem picks Avram and Sarah, it's beautiful. But the couple, it continues constantly. You have one of the matriarchs, it's there in the picture, one of the imaut. Right? 
As soon as Sarah Imenu dies, isn't it? so everything stops. Right? Avraham Avinu buries Sarah Imenu, and then right away, immediately, the very next thing is, Avraham is looking for a bride for Yitzchak. No, the Torah doesn't talk about anything else, right? It's it's a very very strong message. That, you know, everything is the found. Everything is created created by. A, if you're talking about avot and imahot, we have the fathers and we have the mothers, all constantly, right? And then you have obviously we have you know Yitzchak uh, goes and you know, marries. We're going to dwell a little bit. Uh, Rivka, and then it's Yaakov Avinu and, and, and the Imahot that they, they, they create the Jewish nation. But you see, out of all these relationships that the Torah uh, talks about, one that is really from the very uh, from the very found, Avram, Avram, uh, the Torah doesn't tell us like, you know, how Avram and Sarah got married, the Torah doesn't tell us. Right? Hashem picks Avram already after he's married to Sarah. So you see, out of the, 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 the marriages that the Torah in Bereshit, the Torah uh, describes in Bereshit, the perfect marriage is, which marriage? Yitzchak and Rivka. Right. We do read in the Torah about some disputes between Abraham and Sarah. It says Abraham and angry at Sarah over the story of Ishmael, if you recall. Right. We do see uh, Yaakov Avinu getting angry at his beloved Rachel, right, when, when Rachel could not have children, right, over there, over there, there is a, you know, uh, you know, the Torah says, uh, you know, it's very interesting over there when, uh, you know, Rachel came to Yaakov and says, how are you uh, you know, give me, give me children. Otherwise, I'm like, you know, I'm dead, so to speak. So Yaakov really gets angry. And what does it say? He says, am I, am I uh, under God? Right? So Rachel says, no. Rachel tells him, look, when your mother could not have children, your father Yitzchak prayed for her. You should pray for me also. So on that, the Shlach HaKadosh says, Yitzchak Avinu, Told uh, uh, I'm sorry, Yaakov Avinu told Rachel, he said, Hatachat Elokim, and he said, Look, he says, My parents lived in Israel, lived in, 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 in Eretz Israel. They were under, so to speak, right, under Hashem. So over there, the tefillah the pr- would, would help. But here we are not in Eretz Israel. So my prayers here, because we're not in Eretz Israel, it's not really as effective as, 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 my, as my father's. Right. But you see, we do, we do see over there that there was some kind of discord. We see that, you know, the relation, that there were, uh, the, the, you know, Yaakov, the Torah says that, you know, there was tension there. But it's very interesting that, you know, the one, one uh, relationship that there is no record of any discord whatsoever, even though the circumstances were very, very ripe. To have this chord, it's between Yitzchak and Rivka. Right? Over there, we know that Rivka was instrumental in kind of like you know deceiving her husband, right? Sending Yaakov Avinu to get the blessings instead of uh, uh, Esav. Right? We know how uh, you know we know how Rivka Imenu basically forced Yaakov. Yaakov Avinu didn't want to do this. Yaakov Avinu followed her mom's, his mom's <coughs> instructions just because of Kibbutz Avayim, respecting of the parents, right? And and here, you know, and obviously Rivka had reasons for doing this, but you see here she was instrumental in like you know in, in this whole uh, ordeal of sending Yaakov instead of Esav, etc., etc. But but yet we do not find, and obviously later on. It's like I found out about all this. But you know, we do not find, we do not find any kind of anger or any, there is no recording in the Torah whatsoever. There was any discord in that relationship between Yitzchak and, and Rivka. And it's, 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 it's amazing. So one of the commentators says that the reason for that was 
that uh, really that that marriage that uh, the family life of Yitzchak and Rivka is the model that the Torah wants us to follow. That was the perfect marriage. That the perfect marriage that is written in the Torah. It's not Abraham and Sarah or the love story between, between Yaakov and Rachel that in love from the first sight, as we see. Mm-hmm. Even though over there also there are a lot of misunderstandings that you know, we will allude to it a little bit. But you see, this, this, the, 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 the marriage between, um, between um, Yitzchak and, um, and Rivka was, it's really the, the, perfect, the perfect relationship. And it's interesting that that, that marriage was, was not, uh, you know, it wasn't, they did not pick uh, each other. It was, there was some, some, there was a Shatran involved, right? This was, right, this was the, the, the relationship was, that was created through Eliezer. Eliezer, a third party, he is the one that picked, right? He is the one that picked uh, Rivka for, for Yitzchak. And you see, and that that really it's, it's very telling because a lot of times, like you see, a lot of people like you know, they, they don't want to hear about like you know, blind dating, etc. But it's you know a lot of times like you know a third party, and you see that's why among like you know, in the yeshiva circles, like you know from the religious circ- circles, it's usually it's it's very uncommon for a couple that you know they just went on a date like you know. Uh, that they met each other. No, it, it's, uh, it, it's usually it's done through a shatran, a matchmaker, right? The different parties that you know to talk about, to think of it, and you know the parents are involved, etc. And because you see in the Torah, this is because a lot of times when we go ourselves, like you know, we we, we, we don't have the proper judgment because we have other other factors, you know, uh, playing a role. So here, this, this one, here that when, when Eliezer was, was involved, here, even though, as, as I said, the circumstances were the most demanding of the other relationships, we do not find any, any discords. It's interesting, the Torah tells us that after, you know, Eliezer picked, uh, picked Rivka, and obviously it wasn't a done deal yet, he brought, right, the halacha requires that, you know, that husband and wife, they need to date before they get married, right? So after uh, Eliezer brings, brings Rivka to, uh, to Yaakov's, uh, to, to Avraham Avinu's household, the Torah tells us, Vayri'eha Yitzchak ha'ohela sarah imo, vayikach et Rivka, vatehilo le'isha, vayi'aveha, vayinachem Yitzchak achare imo. It's very interesting. We have seen the pasuk. It says, "Vayzi'eha Yitzchak ha'ohela Saraimo, vayikach et Rivka." Right, that he married. Kicha here, it's the expression of marriage. Vatilu leisha, she became his wife, and then vayahaveha. This is something everybody knows that ahava, the love comes after marriage. Right, after they got married, then they fell in love. That's what the Torah says, right? Vayehaveha, vayinachem Yitzchak acharei imo. And in the Torah, you know, twice in this pasuk, uh, Yitzchak's mother is mentioned. It says vayehaveha Yitzchak haola sara imo. And then vayikachet v'ko atelu leisho vayehaveha vayinachem Yitzchak acharei imo. After his mother. And you see, the Mepharshim say that, you know, usually, uh, a man, right, he wants to see in his wife a lot of qualities that his mother has. In a, we are talking about like, in, a, in a good way, but when we are talking about a healthy relationship, right, there is a scene in the Pasuk twice. It's talking about like, you know, that, that Hitzchak, right, so Rashi says, Rashi says, and I think, you know, that's a source of a lot of. Uh, Rivalries between between mother-in-laws and brides, right? Because there is some kind of tension, there's some kind of competition, right? I think that the Gemara says if uh, if ever a donkey could climb up from a straight ladder, 
So bride and mother-in-law also would get along, right? But there is, uh, th this is what the Talmud says, right? But you see, you have to realize where does this tension come from, right? The Torah is very, as I said, twice in the Torah. It says, Vaidea Yitzchak HaOla Saraimo, one reference to his, that he brought, he brought, he brought Rivka to the, you know, his mother had passed away already. This is after Saraimo had passed on. And then he says, Vainachem Yitzchak Acharimo that Yitzchak was consoled by Nachem after his mother. So Rashi tells us, Rashi explains what the Pasuk is saying. It says, That she, he saw that, that he saw that Rivka was similar. Dugma is like, you know, Similar to his mother. She called the man Shasara Kayemet, Ayaner Daluk Mer of Shabbat. He saw that the miracles that uh, took place when, when his mom was alive, that the Ner, uh, that, you know, that uh, the, the Shabbat candles at Sarimena would, would lit, would be lit the whole week. He saw the same miracle repeating itself. And also, Uberacham Tsuya Beisa, the Anan Kashura La Ohe. He saw that there was bracha in the, in the dough that you make challah, etc. Blessing there, and also anan kashur ala ochel. There was like in a cloud representing shechinah was above the tent. He saw the same miracles that you know when his 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 mom was alive took place. They were they came back, right? Vayinachem, and then when the Torah says acharei mo derech eretz, right? It says. Kol zaman she'imo shel adam kayemet karuch hu etzla, right? Uh, uh, Rashi tells us that you know while the mother, the mother-in-law, is alive, still like you know, uh, still a, a person has two ladies in his life. <laughs> he has his mother and his wife. Okay. <laughs> what? Rich mother. His mother or his mother? <laughs> no, you see, no, the, the, this is this is uh, Rashi is talking to the to the brides, to the to women, that they should not like, there's no competition here. They complement each other, right? It says, Kol zaman she'imu shel adam kayemet karuchu etzla u'mishemat metahu u'mitnachem ve'ishto. Then afterwards. Afterwards, it's just she becomes the only woman in his, in, 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 in his life, right? Obviously, it's different type of relationships. But you see, this is, you know, you, know, you see a lot of, uh, you know, I, uh, when my, my wife made the chicken, so I said, oh, this is that exactly the way my, my mother makes it. Right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's something, chicken soup, something universal, right? But you see, this is, this is you know, this is what you have in mind. You have... Your, your mother, in, in, and that's why I think it's good when people are dating, <laughs> maybe to see what kind of uh, future mother-in-law, mm -hmm. right, there, there, there is going to, you know, because they, they do play very, very fundamental role in a marriage. Obviously, right, the Torah tells us, I can in-laws, they have to, they have to let the couple live their life, right, Actively, it's a suit for them to be involved, right? That's what the Torah says. Alken yaazov ishet avivetimo. There has to be some kind of like a distance, right, for them to be able to create that oneness, right? The Torah says, Alken yaazov ishet avivetimo. Vishto, in order to have the vekut, in order to to create that that oneness between husband and wife, you need laazov means to leave, right? There, there has to be distance. But, you see, that, that distance, which is, you know, uh, smart in-laws, they have to know those boundaries and not to, to, not to interfere, right? That's why, you know, it says, uh, under the Chupa Bisek, that Hashem, please make this Chatan uh, Kala happy the way in the, the, the Adam and Chavah were in Gan Eden, paradise, there were no in-laws that we, we know, right? So <coughs> the dis difference between in-laws and outlaws is that the outlaws are wanted. 
because the post office, right? They are wanted. So you see that? This is, you know, this is, this is a must. This is the basics for Shalom Bayit is that the, husband, that the in-laws should not interfere. Right? They, they cannot interfere. But, you know, without them actively being involved, we have to realize that, you know, this, this is, you know, for sure, both mother, and it's, it's on both sides, right? The, you know, the, the, the characteristic of the, of, the, of the parents, it's really, it's reflected on the child, right? And this is, this is very, you know, you see, it's, it's very interesting. It just shows, the Maharal says a beautiful thing. It says, the Torah tells us, Ki yetzer lev ha'adam ra'a min uram. Right? The Pasuk in the Torah. Hashem, before the Mabul, before he brought the flood, says, Yetzer lev ha'adam ra'a min urav. That in this Yetzer hara is in the person, this evil inclination, from his youth. It doesn't say from birth. It doesn't say from Leda, from birth. Maharal says it's min urav. So, so Rav Hirsch explains, and he says that's also in the Ten Commandments we had last week. It says, that, 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 you know, Hashem says there is some kind of, like, you know, Hashem poket avon avot al banim al shirir. It's in the Ten Commandments that you see that Hashem punishes the kids because of the fathers, of, because of the, of the parents, and also brings, like, you know, kindness to thousands of generations because of the parents, right? And obviously the Torah is saying, you know, if the kids, uh, right, follow the bad ways of their parents, so they are also punished because of the parents. But you see here, there is, there is a connection. There is a connection because the parents are the ones who bring up and, and, and they raise, uh, raise their children. So the situation at home is reflected in the kids. If there is a ra, if there is some kind of, like, you know, if there, if there are negativities, it comes from the youth, from the upbringing, from home. Because this is what they have seen, and that 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 puts a very heavy responsibility on uh, on the parents. We have to realize, uh, right, to to have you know good children. Stipler used to say it's fifty percent prayers and fifty percent the relationship between the parents. Right? If the kids see, it says it, it Stipler is the formula. It's very simple. It says you want to have good children, aside from Jewish education, etc. Right? Stipler says. 50% of having good children is prayers to fill out constantly to pray for the kids. And the other 50% is the caliber, the, the quality of the relationship between, between the parents. Because this is what they see, right? You see, Yitzhak Avinu expects to see in, a, in Rivka a character like, like his mother, because that's what he, he has seen all those miracles. So when he saw the same, that that's how, right, he decided to marry her, and then we see, right, that you had, uh, right, that, that we see, like, that the Torah tells us, the Torah testifies, right, the Torah puts its hallmark that there was Ahava, there was love between this husband and wife. Who is Stipler? What? Who is Stipler? Stipler was Harav uh, Kanievsky, Zichronot Yivracha, his son now is Reb Chaim Kanievsky. Everybody goes to get blessing. I was blessed to get a blessing from the father and the son. <laughs> I, the I was uh, the rabbi. Right. I I I married in 1985. I went uh, I went to to the stipler and I got a blessing from him. And then uh, every time I go to Israel, I go to his son, to Reb Chaim oh, in Israel, right? Yes, okay. in Bnei Brak. A very 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 humble home. That I don't think even Baranas, uh, but our maids would not live in such conditions. So, but it, it's it's good to go if you go to Bnei Barak, if you go to Israel, go see their house, <laughs> and and he's he's one of the leaders of of Torah jewelry world over. You see, like you know what kind of uh, you go there, like into the bedroom, you see the whole kitchen, everything. Right? <laughs> so anyway, so he says that the stats that one of the one of uh, Stipler had two. Uh, two very famous uh, sayings about family life. One was this, that you, know, you want to have ch good children, 50%, he said it's prayers, 50% is the relationship between the parents, the love, respect, caring. 
And he had another famous, uh, famous thing that he said. He said, over 90% of Sholem Bayit problems, he said, over 90%, if I'm not mistaken, if it's maybe the most, uh, I don't know the exact uh, language, it's, it's uh, that if there is disharmony at home, it's because of Gava. It's because of like, you know, a big shot, right? Says that, that's the reason. He says when you have, you know, he's, he told couples, whenever you have a Shalom Bayit problem, pause. See, is it, is it Gava, is it Qurur, is it because of uh, uh, arrogance or not? And he, he said, like, you know, for sure, he said the great majority, I think it's at 90%, it's because of arrogance and haughtiness and uh, Gava. Anyway, so... Uh, just in a sense, we are talking about the Torah models. So we spoke about oneness that the Torah believes. It's not a partnership that everybody has his own checking account and this and that. No, it's oneness. Whatever they make, whatever he makes, she makes, it really should be a joint account. They spend from that joint account. Everything, whatever they own, it's, 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 it's together. It's not a partnership. It's not... It's not like you know one entity, right, taking over the other one, but it's it's merging together, and we see this notion of true love coming after marriage, by your, right, uh, the opposite of all the Hollywood models that we, we see that you know first they fall in love, and then they that they get married, right? The Torah tells us this is the perfect marriage in Torah, love comes after. By, it's interesting, by Yaakov Avinu, you see, you see it reversed. <laughs> Yaakov Avinu, <coughs> when he sees, from, it was love from the first sight, right? Yaakov Avinu sees uh, Rachel, and he, you know, he falls in love with her, and he's willing to work for seven years to marry her, right? So, but see, on, on that love, you do have problems. You see that uh, you know they had they had a fight. The Torah tells us that they had a fight. But you see that also and this is what I, I wanted to, to allude to that that is you have to realize that you know, even by Yaakov Avinu, that love is not is not what we imagine as like you know the loves that you know the Hollywood uh, type of loves. Because the Torah says by be enough kiyarim achadim. It says the seven years were t- to him like you know. Like a few a few days, and you see, if, if, it, if it had been infatuation, it would have been uh, uh, seven centuries. Right. And why seven? Why seven years? So the Mufarshim explained that uh, Yaakov Avinu, before he met Rachel, Rachel, he was already a prophet. That we know Hashem spoke to him before that, and he knew that he, that he has to bring Klal Israel, that he has. The twelve tribes are going to come out of him, right? And, and those twelve tribes were supposed to come from. Right? Ya- you, you should know, Yaakov Avinu did not didn't have any plans to marry four wives. Right? <laughs> Yaakov Avinu was forced into that. The same way that Avram Avinu the one to marry, you know, Avram Avinu also Sarah was the one, right? Sarah, I mean, he was the one that forced forced literally Avram Avinu to marry Hagar. And unfortunately, we had all these cousins, the Arabs, from that marriage. And by the way, there you see also, by the way, you see that Judaism is from the, from the mother, because Avram Avinu has two wives. Avram Avinu, the same way he's our father, he's the father of the Arabs. That's right, from the same father, just the mothers are different. Right? Hagar versus, versus Sarah. But you should know that, you know, in, 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 in Torah's view, the same way there is one God, the same way there is one wife. That, you know, it, this Kabbalist it goes very deep. I'm not going to go into it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. But you see, so, so, oh, so how come, if, if that's the case, so how come uh, Avram had not two wives? So, uh, Avram was a good husband. His wife wanted him, forced him, and, uh, and she was the one that forced him to take her girl. The same is true about Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu just, you know, his intention was was to marry just uh, just Rachel, right? But you see, when, so then we know the whole story with Lavan that he sent Leah instead of Rachel to, to the Chupa, and then Rachel and Leah 
they basically force, I mean, they push Yaakov Avin to marry Zilpah and Bilhah. Right? But you see Yaakov Avin, but really the Akert Abayit was, was Rachel Imenu. Just, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned some, some teachings of Kabbalah here. Let me conclude with this. That, you see, this relationship between Yaakov and his wives, it's, it's, very, it's very symbolic and it's very deep. It's basically, you know, that in Kisar Kavod, in Hashem's throne, so to speak, there are four sides to it. One side, it's, it's the shape of a human being. That, the human being there, it's Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu's image is in Kisar Kavod. So the Mekubalim tell us that the relationship that we have with Hashem, it's uh, very deeply connected to Yaakov and his four wives. Right? Hashem relates to, the, to us, Hashem the Creator, relates to us in that the relationship of Yaakov and his four wives, and the four wives actually represent four different uh, levels of spir spirituality of the Jewish nation. You see, if, if, if Yaakov Avinu, just to simplify a very deep Kabbalistic uh, concept, if Yaakov Avinu would have married only Rachel, so then when we are beautiful and good, right, we would have been Hashem's chosen people. But if we are like Le'ah, that Le'ah, the Torah tells us that Le'ah was not pretty. Right? That's what the Torah says. Rachel Imenu was pretty, etc. But if Yaakov Avinu would have married just Rachel, right, so then when the Jews are not good, Hashem would have deserted us. But the fact that you know, Yaakov Avinu has Rachel, right, Rachel, Le'ah, Zilpan, Bilha, this is what guarantees that Hashem would never forsake the Jewish nation. Right? Whether we are good and you know, we, we follow Hashem's uh, rules, etc., the mitzvot, we are like Rachel, we, are, we, are, we have a connection to Hashem. And also if we are Le'ah, and Le'ah is the exact opposite, still we are connected. Right? That this connection, that what we have with Hashem, is really eternal, right? You know, and, and Hashem would never forsake us, no, no matter what. In the Tanah of Eliyahu says that in Hashem is Sameach Bechelko. Sameach Bechelko means that he is happy in his lot. In other words, this is he's stuck with us, right? He can't, he can't change that. This is something that we are, we are in this relationship, right, for good, right? So this is reflected in that relationship between Yaakov Avinu and. Um, and, uh, and the, the, Arba, the, the, the Imahot. So, but you see, just to go back on, on, on what we, we started the discussion, here we have to realize that, uh, that Yaakov Avinu, right, unlike Yitzchak Avinu, there was discord in that relationship because that Ahava was premature. That Ahava, the Torah tells us, that, you know, from fir first sight, Yaakov Avinu, loved Rachel, which wasn't really that mature love that came afterwards, that caused right, trouble later on, later on in the relationship. But you know, the one that, you know, that the prototype that we see that was the perfect, perfect marriage was between Yitzchak Avinu and, um, and, and Rivka, which the Torah teaches us beyond any, any doubt very clearly right, that you know, the true love comes after marriage, if that oneness, if, if that oneness is in mind, that, you know, that marriage is like you know, merging, merging together. And we all know the famous story of, uh, of Rabbi Rab Arya Levin, the Tzaddik of Yerushalayim. Right? Actually, there are two stories about him, right, about marriage. One is that, you know, that, you know before when they, 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 lived, they lived together, I don't know, for 70 years, I don't know. So when, when, he, when they were older, like you know, his, uh, he, had, he had to take, take, to take his wife to a doctor. And uh, when they go to the doctor, he tells the doctor, my wife's right, foot hurts us. Right? That's what he said. Right? So this is really the ultimate of what the Torah says. Right, what the Torah says, like the Basar Achad, that oneness, and um, 
And the second story is that when after his uh, after his wife passed on, once you know, he took uh, he took uh, he took a cap, a monit, and uh, and the cab driver asked him, "If I buy chelcha, right? Where is your house?" So he said, "Any buy it." He said, "What do you mean?" He says, "He says my wife passed on." passed away. I only buy it. House is buy it. His wife is, is his buy it. So he says, oh, I find a car. Oh, I find a car. Where do I live? This is the address. Oh. But buy it, I don't have buy it anymore. Buy it is finished, right? So this is, this is, you know, Rabbi Arya Levin, and it's, uh, and you see, and, and he told, you know, he used to tell this Talmudim that, you know, that this uh, oneness, it, it takes, uh, it takes a lifetime of really commitment to each other to get there. I heard that not too long ago, and I've been repeating it uh, numerous times under the chuppah, that you know, when we say Hayat Mekudeshet Li, Li, right, you are sanctified to me, Li has two letters, Lamed and Yud. Lamed being the tallest Hebrew letter, Yud is the smallest. And more than anything, a Jewish marriage is about being committed to each other. Being committed to each other with the highs and lows, lows of life. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I said it over that, you know, when uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I was in somebody's house for Sidichot, um, and you know, they have been, it's a couple, they have been, uh, it turned out that, you know, it was already, already also their 40th or 50th anniversary, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So it's a certain doctor that lives in Beverly Hills, right? So he said, it is a beautiful thing, he said, when we got back, he said, I went to medical school in Iran, and you know, before the revolution, I was doing very well in Iran, and, and then, you know, we had to leave everything, you know, penniless, we left Iran and came back, and we had to start from scratch. So we had a lot of highs and lows in life. So he said, the night of our wedding, they put us on, on, on chairs, and they picked us up, up and down, up and down. So he says this was very symbolic, <laughs> right? You're going to be together, you're going to be up and down in life, but see these ups and downs, that commitment really brings to that ahava, that ahava, love that comes after marriage, it comes, it, it's forged through that commitment and uh, being with each other. Hopefully it should be always lamed and the, uh, the highs, but in life, right, like nature has... Uh, highs and lows. It's very interesting also that you know the date that we're writing the Ketubah, right? It's lunar, like you know, this Hebrew Hebrew month, and you know uh, the moon also has ups and downs. You see, the moon sometimes you have the full moon. A lot of people that try to put the date of their marriage, the first half of the month, preferably, right? Because then the moon is going towards completion. But you see, whether it's going through completion or coming uh, smaller, bigger, and sometimes even disappears. But then the good news is that then reap, it reappears. <laughs> right? The same thing is really, they say, the love between husband and wife. It doesn't mean that it's constant thing. There are ups and lows in, in, in relationships also. But you see, we have, uh, we have to have that commitment with Zod uh, to, to be devoted to creating that uh, oneness which is achieved through, you know, uh, through, through proper uh, expectations in marriage that it should be based on, 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 on giving a hava, which is, which is hava. And then someday, who knows? Because also it's like, you know, my, uh, uh, it, should, it should never be any pain, but you know, it's like, you know, my wife's foot hurts us, uh, hurts us right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, fine, we'll continue next week with the